What's up, Sim Racers? This is Larry at TGR Sim. I hope you had a Merry Christmas and going to have a actually Happy New Year as well. But today, we're getting back to work. We got some Husenfeld sprint pedals in for review, for testing and review, that they graciously sent me here the other day. And I uh, haven't had a chance to mount them up because it's Christmas. But I want to go ahead and do the unboxing for you. Let you see what comes in the box. Talk about it a little bit. So let's get into it. First up, here's the box that comes in nice and tidy. Nice Susan Field box labeled. Everything's nice and supported in there just fine. We'll put that off to the side. And here are the pedals themselves. I love it when companies put text on here for us to read about. So this one, if everything seems under control, you're not going fast enough. Isn't that true, huh? And then the other one, let me see. This is gonna be the pedal. This looks like the pedal plate. Uh, the winner ain't the one with the fastest car. Is the one who refuses to lose. Yep, so true. So, let's jump into it. Let's, let's knock out the pedal plates first here. Do this unboxing. It's the least amount of uh, things to go over. Make sure I'm in view here. Yep, I am. So, first off, we got a nice pamphlet here for your product manual. Goes over your stuff. The products, how to mount it up and everything. So, pretty straightforward. Nice that they include manuals. It's a lost art, I can tell you these days, with everything on the internet. So, I appreciate a company sending manuals. You get the uh, box of goodies here, all the nuts and bolts that you need. You will notice there's some, uh, let me pull them out here real quick. But you also have some spacers in here, some 20 and 40 millimeter spacers. Right here and uh, what these are for is to offset your your heel plates higher up uh, or you're liking so 20 and 40 millimeter or of course you can mount it straight down to the base I'm not going to assemble this one here I'm just going to show you what's in the box we'll get to the assembly of course later on in this video really nice Susan Feld stainless steel plate looks like and uh, with a nice logo. Actually, it's really nice looking. I really like this. All right. Also, nice powder coated steel. Let's see if that's still in shot. Put it maybe right here, right? Also got the, let me get it out here. The legs. Legs. Let me just jump this stuff out of here real quick. That should be it there okay so i arranged it real quick here it looked a little bit better more concise in the, in the frame here so what we get here out of the pedal plates of course is the Husenfeld heel plate you get the mounting plate here which is where your pedals and stuff are going to mount to and then of course the brackets these will actually mount down to your pedal plate or your rig itself uh, these bigger slotted holes See if that's in there. Bigger slotted holes there will go down towards your rig, and these smaller ones will be upwards into your pedal plate itself. And uh, yeah, you can kind of arrange it any way you want to, but it pretty much goes with these flats up. That's how it's going to end up looking, like so, with of course the legs underneath it. But we'll get more into the mounting of this here. In a little bit and uh, when I actually go to mount it up to my Symmetic K2 rig itself uh, we'll jump into how you mount everything up there at that point. So that gets the pedal plate uh, unboxing done and let's go ahead and look at the next one which of course be the, 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 the main attraction. This is a necessity but I know everybody wants to see the pedals themselves and uh, yeah, me too. Let's check it out. All right, so let's look at the Fista Resistance. 
the uh, actual pedals themselves here. Unbox these puppies. Nice and crisp in here. Nice little pamphlet here again. Another another thing. Let's see what's in the pamphlet here real quick. I know y'all probably seen this stuff before. I gotta show it to you again, okay? All right. First, you got your nice pamphlet. That's of course gonna explain all the stuff to do it. And you can also go online, but it's really nice when you're building stuff to have a pamphlet to look at. So again, a lost art with a lot of companies love that Husenfeld uh, does that. Oh my gosh, here we go. We got some cool stickers here, which of course go on to my Momo seat back here. Oh, lots of them, nice. Lots of stickers. Whites, blues, reds, the likes. So yeah, good stuff here. <laughs> I'm a sucker for stickers, okay? So let me get that cleaned up there. As you're saying, Larry, I just want to see the pedals. Put to the side. Another how do you want it? Little uh, thanks for your purchase card right there. Slide that off. That over there. All right, first up, of course, this is going to be the goodies. All the little uh, goodies and stuff that you need here. And this should be the, jump into it real quick here. You've got the USB cable. And then you got all these extra little bumpers and stuff. Let me see. And the tools themselves, I'll just drop it out here like this. You can hear the sound of them different. These here are the plastic uh, spacers themselves. Uh, so very hard. Uh, plastic here just meant to be a spacer in between it and then these of course are all your different durometer uh, I believe actually they're all the same durometer is what I understand uh, they're just cut to different lengths so you actually have less squish you know the less travel that the durometer will be compressed the harder it'll get right so it kind of work hardens in, in a sense but it's rubber so it doesn't harden <laughs> But uh, yeah, hopefully that makes sense. But anyway, shorter it is the stiffer your resistance on the pedal is going to be. So you have, I believe what's on the set already, the pedals, is, is the longest one, which kind of simulates more of a road feel car. And then this is kind of the medium and then the hard. It goes all the way up to 65 kilograms. So several spacers here. One, two, three, four spacers there to use and then three different other uh, uh, rubber bushings there or bell down bushing so and then you got your tools here you got some allen wrenches here of course and uh, you got your little spanner tools here some of them look to be custom made they're all probably custom made actually but yeah spanner tools and one of the most important tools here is this one here which is going to be and you go insert um, to adjust the angle of your pedal and your brake, you will need this as a spacer just to take up the space and go in there. So, we'll look at that here a little bit as well. Now, you want to know there's actually a lot of cool uh, a lot of videos. Barry Roland, of course, has his, which I watch this stuff all the time. And uh, great, great stuff. Look at the packaging on this thing, man. It's, it's really done well with the uh, cutouts to match exactly the cutouts on the pedals themselves. And boy, howdy, do those not look freaking awesome. Ah, dang. Man, you, I tell you what, you look at these in person as opposed to through just the... 4k goodness here of, of this video but uh it really comes to likeness i mean oh my gosh this is such a high quality pedal hot oh, damn so <laughs> really good here so this is uh this is going to be the throttle pedal here and this was uh, pretty unique here you know when i was talking about the spanner tool here this is uh going to be more for adjusting the height but on the brake itself 
doesn't you're not required to use it for the throttle or the clutch itself so uh, you just unscrew these two and, it, and swing the arms down to make your your pedal face go further forward right now it's at a negative 25 degrees I forgot the max that it goes to I want to say it's probably plus 25 degrees but or maybe it's straight up and down but uh, anyway I'll post it up really nice here so you got your little uh, you don't interchange springs on this kit. It already comes with the springs that you're going to need to use. And uh, so there's nothing to put a harder springs in or anything. So that's cool. And you do have, of course, your adjustment here. You have your lock washer, lock washer, lock nut rather, right here that you'll unscrew. And then this is your tension, your pre-tension, your preload rather, which you would want to say. Uh, to preload your spring, how do you want it there? And uh, that's it. And then, of course, you go into the software and set it up. As far as your adjustments, and we'll get into the software too as well. Comes with the little uh, uh, foam cable RJ45, I guess it is, and uh, so yeah, that that's pretty cool. And that's all, they're all going to plug directly into the brake pedal itself. So, uh, so right there, then picture, not in picture, right there. Go take out the clutch. Let's just take them all out here real quick. And the brake. We'll get the box out of the way. All these lights have become really hot. This is what you're going to see here, though. With all our brake and clutch. Holy cow, did that look amazing. Get that out from right there. Wow, that looks good. Is that in film? Yes, it is in film. <laughs> so, this is the set you're going to get here. And let's look at the. I'm so eager to get to the brake. <laughs> Let's go ahead and look at the clutch itself as well. That was the same, pretty much the same as what you'll see. You know what? I want to point one thing out about about the uh, throttle actually before that that I learned when I was watching some how tos and stuff. So if you go to Husenfeld's uh, website, it has some uh, uh, really good videos of how to make all these adjustments. So I really don't need to go into repeating what they're doing. I'm just going to leave you to refer back to theirs because uh, they they did it very good with a, not a lot of extra uh, verbiage, just to the point. And uh, yeah, it's, it's looks really good. But I'll go over some key features here real quick that you can keep in mind. So this pedal here itself being the throttle, surprisingly, if you're someone like me that comes from uh, Fanatic V3 pedals and V2s and V1s and all that, the throttle is what's you know has some resistance to it, but it's it's pretty stiff compared, or it's pretty loose compared to how stiff that the Husenfeld pedal is. I'm trying to hold hold it down here with my other hand here, keep it from flexing up. But holy cow, is that stiff using your hand? If you're used to any other pedals, you just use your finger to move them in and out, or grab your palm your your fingers like this and, and wave it. You don't do that with this pedal. So I don't know. Uh, that's that might be more uh, for someone else or too much for someone else or, or not enough for another. It just depends how big your legs are and how strong your feet are and, and what you like to use. But right now it's set to the middle setting here. Now you could actually unscrew this bolt here, nut and bolt here. Is this some picture? Yep. Nut and bolt there. And slide it down to the lower location and that'll make the pedal looser or lighter rather or you can go up one and that'll make it a heavier one as well and also you can of course loosen up the preload a little bit for your initial but you always want just a tad bit of preload so you don't get any rattling with your spring so that is what it is uh, but I am going to go ahead and test these just like it is out of the box now I know that my Avid Sim Racers out there Y'all guys are going to tinker for days with this stuff, and, and I will too myself. But I wanted to give you at least a, a, a indication of what the feel is just straight out of the box. Because these are already calibrated straight out of the box and uh, and set to a medium setting, basically. Kind of cover all bases. So <laughs> we'll test them like that, and of course I'll probably change something. But the clutch now, get on to the clutch here. A nice little another... Just holy cow, does this stuff look good? And it's actually pretty, it's light to handle, but uh, 
so so solid feeling. It, it's like nothing's flimsy on this thing. It's just just metal, man. And these are actually stainless steel plates, and this is uh like a carbon steel metal. Now, what grade carbon steel they have, I'm not sure, but that's why you powder coat it because if you are using this out in the elements, like in your garage or something like that, where you're not climate controlled, you're going to want powder coating on the on the carbon steel components so they don't rust. Uh, but most of us, I think, probably race in climate control environments and uh, would be happy with, with that. But the contrast of them, actually, you know, the wow factor when you look at these is like, holy cow, those look really, really good with the contrast of the stainless and the carbon steel. And then even the black springs in here look really cool, too. So now you'll notice the spring on the clutch is much thicker uh, than what it is on the throttle itself. The throttle, nice rounded spring, uh, spaced out a lot further, and the clutch is more of a squared off spring, uh, looks to be much stiffer, and uh, the wounds are much closer together as well. So I'm just going to do a little push test here and see what that feels like. This would do that. Okay, there we go. So you do have that little push, 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 and then that that bite over point right there feels just like a clutch. Holy shit, feels good. I will probably, because your legs are always really strong, uh, I will probably adjust this to the heaviest settings. But like I said, I'm going to test it out of the box just like it is. Now you can adjust it to a heavier setting from my understanding, and I want to see have it done. Let me see. That is, well, I don't remember how to do it. I think I saw it on the video on how to do that. Well, I'll get into that later here because I'm not, it has not popped in my head of how to make this a heavier screen than it is, or heavier resistance than it is though. But yeah, that's pretty damn heavy anyway. Right there. So, <laughs> geez, man, another. Another goodness. All right, so let's look at the brake here. Another fantastic piece of equipment here. Wow, does this look good. All right, so again, you'll see here a lot thicker metals uh, going across because, you know, it's a heavier duty unit. This is going to take 65 kgs or 143 pounds of force. Now, that's way more. I think this is really catered more for your, your everyday sim racer that doesn't have to simulate F1 car type stuff like your professional racers would want to use. If you need something heavier duty than this brake pedal to simulate uh, a more real world car that you may be driving, of course, um, you can go ahead and move on up to the, uh, to the uh, what are they called? The, the, not the Sprint, but the uh, Ultimate, sorry, yeah, the Ultimate pedals. Which those goes up to 300 pounds of force, so 136 kilograms. So, uh, holy shit, that's a lot of force. But these, I think, will be plenty fine here. And uh, tons of an adjustment with these as well. I really like how fat this thing looks going up and then down slender. Uh, highly adjustable as well. And, of course, in the video, it does show you. Now, here is all the electronics in the backside of it here. And you'll see the USB plug in, or not USB, the uh, phone jack plug in there, phone jack plug in there. So when you have it set in here, you of course can plug them in on either side, that and camera on either side like that. And you're actually spacing wise, let's look at that real quick here. Spacing wise, and I know I didn't go over every aspect of the brake yet. I'm not going to click it in just yet, but. That's a pretty good distance there for, I think, to accommodate most people there. So uh, that's about three inches in between the plates. So three and a half inches, same there. So if you're someone that doesn't do heel toe braking, you just do the braking itself. That's actually a really good distance there to keep you from accidentally uh, hitting the gas or hitting the brake when you're hitting the gas. I know some of these pedals you've, I've used in the past uh, you end up having them so close together that when you hit the gas, your shoe is big enough to start clipping onto the brake as well, which is, you know, horrible. So these at least give you that adjustment. 
Now, if you needed something spaced further apart, I think it would be a little bit unrealistic to have it really far apart. Let's say you're not going to use the clutch and you want it to break really far apart and it won't reach, uh, more like what a road car would be. You could always get another extension, little uh, uh, RJ45 uh, clip, a female clip to another female clip and plug it in there. I don't see why that would not work as far as to spread them out further if that's what you wanted. But however, I think that the crowd that's going to be, uh, that this product is catered to is, is more or less going to utilize all three pedals. And so yeah, I think this is probably proper enough distance here for you. Plus you got to consider it's designed to fit onto their plate itself and that only has uh, so many millimeters of, of, of distance within within each piece that it can go. So. Everything's in considered in design intent as that goes. So, yeah, if you don't use that pedal plate and need something further apart, then well, you're modding it yourself, and uh, it's easy enough if you're in that realm of things to add an extension cord for it. So, all right. So, let's look at the brake itself. Again, really big fat. Uh, let's put this in, in view. Really big fat. Uh, surface here. Oh, and I did not mention earlier, and it keeps popping in my head here. These are adjustable plates. You literally just unscrew this, rotate the plate around, and that way you have the shorter half on top and the longer half on bottom. Really, not so much of a big deal, probably with the with the brake itself. With the gas, you may uh, want more length or, or you know, more length on the bottom and shorter on the top. So you can rotate that around. 180 degrees and have a longer pedal plate here shorter on top so and it's really neat that their logo is 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 so universal that it looks the same upside down as well so that's a pretty cool touch there so anyway get on to the brake here adjustments on the brake same thing you still got the uh, angle adjustments you can do this is at a negative 25 degrees and of course you can go on up to I think there's let me see two, four, six, seven. Uh, what was it? Two, four, six, eight holes. Eight holes that you can adjust up to. Now it has the, of course, the like I mentioned a while ago, electronics. And to adjust it the same way, you have this lock nut here that you can unscrew, preload adjuster here, and then run whatever combination of of. Uh, rubber urethane bushings that you want now this is of course more catered to the road car you got your your back back up here uh another spacer spacer there and these are two spacers here as well so let me just try to mimic what this feels like hopefully it's going to be here okay not much hopefully you can see in this in camera not much movement out of that now of course your feet pushing your leg pressure and stuff is going to be pretty hard but yeah that feels really good that <laughs> feels real real good i can't wait to get these mounted up actually uh, so much it was killing me not to uh pre-mount them up before i do it shooting this video here myself so but yeah uh, these look to be you know extremely high quality you know for the people that want to invest in in something like this uh, you, you're pretty much going to the next level in your sim racing hobby. Uh, you know, if you started off with, say, Thrustmasters or, or Fanatics, non-load cell pedals, load cell pedals, uh, this is, of course, the next evolution in your in your hobby. This is more of the professional grade, high end stuff. Speaking about load cells, they all three come with load cells. So <clears throat> there's no um, the only adjustment you do with them as opposed to what you're probably used to is pitchometers on the throttle and the clutch. Uh, these have in load cells. There's nothing to get dusty on and lose a little bit of the contact. There's nothing to actually service on these, which is actually one of the biggest points I really like about these pedals. Is the cert there is some servicing on them that I did see in the pamphlet when I was looking online. I haven't looked at it in the box, but uh, online. And it's more or less just using a WD-40 PTFE uh, uh, lubricant in here that you would just spray on the uh, on the springs itself is what it looked like on, on most of the cases. So and then on the brake as well, out the back side here, 
and on the spring there. But uh, check your owner's manual, of course, for the exact location. I, I believe that's really if you just started developing a squeak or something that you did not like. But historically, most of the Husenfeld stuff is very quiet. Uh, I know I use the handbrake like crazy, and it's been quiet. I've been using it for, oh my gosh, probably three years now. Still holding up to all the views. Uh, here are, of course, the load cells here in the bottom. And uh, this is, of course, on the brake. Let's see, compare that one to the throttle. Looks a little bit different. It's the same, but a little bit. Throttle one's a skinnier one and a little bit longer. Uh, but the throttle and clutch, I believe, around 16 kilograms. Uh, when you look up the paperwork online, and this is 65. So uh, plenty, plenty of force. Everything's calibrated, of course. So, you know, what you put force wise here is different than what this is registering down here. So, <clears throat> but yep, that is it. That's all I can think of right now. And looking at these unboxings of the, of the pedals themselves and oopsie, a little clumsy here today. And of course the hill plate itself really cool kit and I can't wait to get them mounted up and of course I'll, I'll step through it with you on the mounting phase of it all and then we'll run through the software because the software is actually really cool with the software because you can adjust you know not only your throttle curves you know, like an S pattern or something like that to your brake curves uh, right there in the software you know you can have your preload have your brake feel like you want it to feel physically but have the output read a little bit different. So if you wanted to give away at the top when you do like to say an emergency brake uh, going down the straight with like cars that are not ABS that put a lot of force in it up front as you're coming down the, down the straight and then bleed off the pedal as, you, as you're exiting or, or mid, cur mid corner rather uh, bleeding off the, uh, the, the pressure on the brake Sometimes you get those cars that do a little bit of a brake check on you in front of you and you, you hit the brake harder right there at that point. Uh, you can set the curve to where it doesn't apply as much pressure as you panic braking at the top. So really cool how the software works on this thing from what I've seen and uh, uh, from other reviewers as well as just uh, looking at it online. So yeah, really cool. Same thing with the, uh, the throttle and the clutch uh, throttle you can adjust your curves how you want it going linear uh, effect uh, straight across or if you want something uh, smoother right off the tip of the throttle just right when you start pushing it down a little bit smoother not pouring on all the power just right away uh, so really cool how you can do that because uh, I know a lot of times in, in the middle of a curve and stuff if you have a little bit more of what we call an abrupt throttle response uh, could really send your back tires into starting spinning up and and uh, get you out of whack there. So um, really cool if you're driving a particular car that is very sensitive on the throttle, you can adjust your your curve, your throttle curve, to accommodate for that. So uh, really cool stuff. Same with the uh, clutch. You can adjust your clutch curve to where you have that dead spot. So if you're doing some uh, uh, takeoffs, standstill takeoffs on the line and you want to uh, ride the clutch, so to speak, right there off the line, you can set this to where your uh, throttle curve, or I'm sorry, your clutch curve is that you have a flat spot in there. So when you have it pushed down so much, you can pretty much ride your clutch right there and uh, in that spot as you, let, you know, uh, lift off of the clutch pressure, keep it from spinning so much. So really really cool stuff there so <laughs> I like it so anyway uh, that's it that's the look at the unboxing hope you enjoy it and uh, I'm gonna get these mounted up and share more with you so stay tuned I am out of here